digital transformation in the railway industry. Joining us to speak about that today, Pranav Misal, Transportation Analyst at ARC Advisory Group. Pranav, welcome. Thank you, Russell. Pranav, let's talk about the digital uh, transformation that uh, is in fact taking place in this indispensable, very important area. But what is the status of it? What's going on? Fill us in. So railway industry is at the major critical change of digital transformation, and it is driven by IIoT, new business models, uh, skill labor, innovative technologies. And um, uh, ARC believes the, uh, the legacy infrastructure will continue to exist for a very long time but the industry needs to adapt to the, exist the new changes that it is coming along with it. And I believe uh, although digitization brings, uh, offers broad range of opportunities for the railway industry, it also raises few questions that needs to be addressed by the rail operators. So for instance, which business model should they adopt to, to have that digitization in the existing system? Uh, the second question would be, what additional benefits does it offer to the uh, rail operators and end users that can be either passengers or freight transit. And the third question, I believe, is um, how can sub-suppliers or uh, original equipment manufacturers or rail operators can function together uh, in a new technology that is, that is uh, going to impact the industry going forward? You know, there are no end of stories in the business press about digital revolution, about Industry 4.0, and quite frankly, about the Internet of Things. Let's talk about the latter. Let's talk about uh, the impact or the benefit of IoT in the rail industry. Walk us through that. What, what would you say? Sure. The, so industry right now, you might have heard plenty of buzzwords related to digitization. That includes IoT, big data analytics, smart mobility. So the two factors which are driving the smart rail are process efficiency and safety. While I IIoT is driving uh, process efficiency for rail operators, uh, it is also uh, ensuring safety for the consumers. So talking about process efficiency, it, it includes communication systems, train control systems, uh, increasing uh, infrastructure capacity for passenger and freight, and reducing energy consumption. While talking about safety, it, it is more aligned towards uh, safety of the assets, uh, which includes linear assets, rolling assets, physical assets while cybersecurity is and fourth dimension which has been added to the, um, to the industry at this point of time. And all these factors taken together are driving uh, better return on investments for rail operators, which is uh, lowering the uh, life cycle costs and increasing uh, customer satisfaction. I think it's fair to say that IoT has evolved quite a bit uh, over the years. So looking at the changes that have taken place in 2017, do you see those uh, carrying over into 2018, or do you see any further developments? What would you say? Yes, so there are a few trends which would definitely go into 2018 and beyond into next decade for sure. Uh, so the first one would be digitization. So as we are talking about IoT here, so the, so the sensors, the assets, and the connectivity all the way to the higher level to cloud analytics, uh, real-time decision-making, asset performance management, and it will... I believe it will continue to evolve for f at least few years down the line. Uh, the second uh, trend which, we, uh, which I believe will impact the industry is the urbanization. So as, as per United Nations, 53% of uh, population resides in urban areas. But going forward by 2015, it's going to be 66%, which will continue to drive the public transit segment and also encourage um, interurban mobility. So, and it is strongly evident in China and India, which are the emerging economies at this point of time. And the third trend, uh, which will continue to evolve or for at least five to 10 years down the line is consolidation. So we have been seeing for last few years, like companies like CNR and CSR have merged their rail operations to form one of the biggest company uh, in the rail segment. While last year we saw Alstom and Siemens merging their rail operations. So. We believe if this trend continues for the next five years, there will be a handful of companies uh, that will be offering linear assets and rolling assets for the train companies. Final question, Pranav. There are always some kind of glitches or whatever that uh, hinder um, any technological development. I'm just curious, what kind of, um, of impediments do you see to fast development of a so-called connected train? What would you say? 
Uh, so the impediments are the first one, cybersecurity. Uh, as we see more and more devices are connected online, uh, it is giving rise to malware attacks and cyber attacks, which is creating a uh, more vulnerable system. So suppliers and um, rail operators together have to design potential countermeasures uh, to address this issue. The second thing is growing uh, manufacturing skills gap. We have been seeing IoT is, is a complex technology and we have been noticed, we have noticed like uh, there have been nuances that uh, this labor does not understand the nuances of these complexities. So finding and retaining this talent is one of the major hurdle uh, which has been noticed by rail operators. So lastly, from the, uh, from the economic perspective, it is, about the, it is the uncertain GDP and closed market environments. So based on uh, international monetary funds, the, the economy was fluctuating for the last few years, but it is expected to be hovering around 5% for the next few years. And if you look at the emerging markets like China and India, they, they are much more difficult uh, markets to penetrate for some reasons. Like for instance, if you look at the Chinese market, uh, the foreign investors or foreign players are not allowed to supply their material into for the high speed railways. And similarly in India, there is a make in India concept which does not let foreign players or does not let FDI uh, into rail industry. So the only option that is left with these players is to partner with the existing domestic suppliers in order to have their uh, products into their systems. Well, Pranav, thank you very, very much. It's just a terrific overview and drill down into a very, very important subject. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Well, that's Pranav Misal, analyst at ARC Advisory Group, and speaking with us today about the digital transformation of the railway industry. Thank you for watching.